Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and this episode actually comes to you from one of you, one of my fans. This one is a, a, a request that I got on my Facebook fan page. Someone came to my page and I liked the page of course and sent me a private message. And what they were asking was how to do a particular technique in Adobe Muse. So they sent me a link to a sample site. And when I clicked on the site, I noticed that not only was it doing a very cool thing, it was a one page site, but it was also featured as a site of the day on Adobe Muse. So I went to the site of the day, I could actually uh, see where it was, but unfortunately the site of the days don't always come or usually don't come with the actual Muse files. So I had to kind of figure out how they would have done this. Now I'm not guaranteeing this is how the person did this, but I did figure out a technique that I think you'll like to do what they did. So let me show you what the technique is and then we'll see how to do it. So first of all, how do you see or get inspiration on uh, how to use Muse better or how to create your sites in a better way? Let's head over to the web browser. And in the web browser, you just simply point your browser to muse.adobe.com. Once you're on muse.adobe.com, you will see, here, let me zoom in a better way, there we go. You will see um, an option for site of the day. So you click on site of the day, which I've done. And by the way, this is even the Muse uh, homepage was built in Muse using some cool scroll effects. So you can get some inspiration there. But anyway, let's, uh, let's head over to the site of the day. And this was the featured one as of right now. Um, but the one that he was referring to was actually a little bit further down. And this is, by the way, where you would submit your site if you want to, um, if you want to actually uh, have your site featured or looked at. All right, so let's scroll down. And I scroll down, and it was actually this site by Jay Tate, uh, Jay Tate Portfolio from the U.S. So let's click on his site and his or her site. Don't know if Jay is a woman or man. Oh, it's a woman, Jennifer. Uh, so Jennifer's site, uh, Jennifer's a designer, game gamer, and geek. Great. Great to meet you, Jennifer, and great to see you on my uh, podcast here. But let's go ahead and scroll down and see what the effect looks like. Well, first of all, if I didn't know to scroll, she's got a nice button here letting me know, hey, there's more down. Or if I just used her navigation links, I could do it this way. But let's go ahead and just click, simply click the scroll button and you'll notice that yes, it's scroll the content. We have more options here, but we also notice in the background, the image changed and the image is just sitting there waiting for us to do something else. So if we scroll again, the image changes again and there's Jennifer Tate, I assume. So Jennifer, great job on your site. And now I'm, I'm gonna take a stab at how I think you would have done this or at least how I would do this. Uh, so we can scroll back up and you notice that the images, the three images are there, no matter if you scroll up or down, use the navigation or not. Well, first of all, you'll notice that this is a full screen image. So the one way I know how to do that is with a full screen slideshow. So let's go ahead and take a look at how I think uh, she did this, or at least how I would do it. First and foremost, I uh, got some of the work out of the way. I just opened Muse, created a blank or uh, brand new site. And all I did on this was I didn't put anything on the master. I just have the one page so far. And on the one page, I went to the page properties and in the page properties, I uh, actually made the minimum height, uh, changed it from the default of 500. I made mine 3600. So I'd have a nice tall page to work with, 3600 pixels tall. You can make yours whatever you want. You don't have to change the minimum height if you don't want to, as long as you're just gonna put enough content on the page to be able to scroll it. So I made this nice long page and all I did was I put three blocks of uh, text in you know, this rectangle white frame. Now, in order to be able to see what I was doing, I didn't, you know, white text doesn't show very well in a white background. I just temporarily changed my browser fill to be this tan color. That way I would have uh, a color to see uh, my white type on. And if we scroll down the page, that, that was box number two, one, here's box number two, and of course box number three, and then the bottom of the page. So that's all I did so far. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the technique. Next thing I'm going to do is go to my layers panel. Because the full screen slideshow takes over the entire page, 
I want to put it on its own layer, so therefore it won't interfere with the stuff that I already put on the page. So I'm going to go and on the default layer, I'm just going to name that layer content. And then I'm going to make a brand new layer. And as you may have guessed, that layer is going to be called slideshow. And we're just going to put slideshow underneath the content layer. So our new blank layer is now on the bottom. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, go over to our widget library, which is where we will find the full screen slideshow. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag it onto the page. Now, because I'm dragging it onto the page onto its own layer, it will take over the entire page, but only on that layer. So my white box and white text is still there. Now we get to control all of our options. First and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and replace the default image, which by the way, this is going to really look bad no matter what image you put in here because it's basically scaling the entire image to be 3,600 pixels tall. And we don't have to worry about that because when the person scrolls, it's going to change images. So we don't have to worry about anyone's monitor being that tall or having our image really distorted like this. But that's okay, it's just the way Muse works. Let's go ahead now and control our options. First and foremost, let's replace the default images with uh, three of my own. So I'm gonna go here uh, to my demo files, to my photos, to my Muse slideshow, and I just exported three random images from my portfolio. And these are three images I took in three locations. So let's go ahead and just, and by the way, they're nice, large files. So they're like at least, I think the smallest one is at least 4,000 pixels wide. And that way Muse will scale them down, but give us nice, good resolution on large displays. So let's go ahead and open them up. And again, it's only going to show us the first one because it is a slideshow. And of course, it's going to make that image really big. We can't even see what it is because it's so large filling up that entire 3,600 3, pixel tall image. Don't worry about it. Uh, also, the other thing is I kind of I thought what she was doing with her shadow at the top was actually putting it in the image. After I did it, I realized, no, there's probably a better way to just go ahead and do it in Muse. So ignore this. Don't worry about doing that yourself. And let's go ahead and uh, let's control our options now. First and foremost... I don't want the transition to be horizontal. I want it to actually fade from image to image, just like she did. Next, I want the transition speed to be uh, defaults to point or half second. I want to do one second. Again, you can change that to whatever you, you're comfortable with. Next, we want to turn off autoplay. We don't want the slideshow to play on its own. We want it to be controlled as a scroll effect. And then last but not least, we'll turn off all this navigation stuff that we don't need. So we'll turn off the previous and next buttons as well as the counter. So now we just have a static slideshow that's just going to sit there right now until we tell it what to do. Next up, we bring up these scroll effects. Once we get the scroll effects panel up, you'll notice that there is... Uh, there are three tabs. There's the regular motion tab, there's the opacity tab, there's the slideshow tab, and then there's the edge animation tab. We're going to switch over to the slideshow tab. You're going to make sure your slideshow is selected. If you have to click off of it and click on it again, sometimes to get it selected, you may have to do that. But now that it's selected, I can enable it using scroll effects. And of course, we don't want it to start playing the slideshow. We want it to switch slides every so many pixels that we scroll down. And again, this is going to take some experimenting on your site, your page, your monitor preferences, so forth and so on. But I'm going to just simply change mine to a nice round number of one. Here, let's change it to 1000 pixels. OK, so now it's going to switch slides as we scroll down every thousand pixels. We only have three images. The page is 3,600 pixels tall. The math kind of works out. So let's go ahead. And also you have to keep in mind that most people's monitors won't be 1,200 pixels tall. So you have to figure out, well, again, what works best for your site. Okay, so we got it all set up. The next thing we do is just let's test it. Let's go up to our file menu. Let's preview page and browser. And that will build out our HTML and open it in our default browser. And there's the first image. And it's, again, just sitting there. Now, of course, you wouldn't know to scroll because I haven't put any navigation on this page yet. But we know to scroll because we know this page is tall. But let's go ahead and scroll down. The content starts to move up. And right about there, 
our image changes to the next image. And it will just sit there, not doing a thing, until we scroll or navigate up some more. So let's scroll again. And there's our last image. So voila, that's how you would do this effect. So for the person that wrote in on my Facebook page, thanks again for the inspiration to give me another idea for a tutorial. And for um, the rest of you that wanted to know how to do a cool thing like Jennifer did on her site, the, again, not guaranteeing how this, this is how she did it, but this is how I would do it. All right, and again, uh, the only other thing I would now do is go back to Muse and give the reader something to know that there's more content. So either put in some navigation, like anchors, that they can just click on to jump down to the next section, or put a menu at the top of the page, which I've done in previous videos showing you how to do a, a menu on a one-page um, site. So either way, or both, she had both. She had a menu at the top, as well as the um, button that says, you know, hey, there's more down, click down. That's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Cloud TV. Uh, thanks for watching. And again, thanks for the inspiration and input on things you want to see how to do in Adobe Creative Cloud. My name is Terry White, and we'll catch you on the next one.